Well, good day, Max here again. Welcome back to the shop. So the time has come with our JFMT lathe that we need to do the final leveling on it. So up until this stage, I've just used my little six inch Starrett level and got it as close as I can with this for a preliminary level. But now we can do its final proper level with a, a 10 inch precision level. So we'll show you our plan. So my preferred method for feet as far as machines go is to keep them low to the ground. So I use 20 millimeter plate, three quarter plate, 100 mil, four inches long by three inches, 75 millimeters wide. And I have these under all of the jacking bolts on the machine and a couple down there as well. So that's my preferred method. Um, I think I've explained this one before. I don't like using big round pucks I don't, as I don't like things sticking out, you know. So <laughs> that's why I use square or oblong shaped feet. And they're not flashly machine things. All they do is have a recess in them to locate on the, well, where the end of the uh, locking screw goes down. So these have the provision too uh, for a stud where they can be bolted down to the concrete. If I choose to do that later on, then I have to remove these and drill a hole through, uh, which I'm <laughs> very tempted to do, but for now we're not going to worry about it. That um, really comes into play if you're turning um, a lot of eccentric work. So just with our preliminary levelling, we're pretty good down here. We'll come up halfway. And we're pretty good there. And we are off a little bit there. So our headstock is a little bit high at this end, but we're sitting on the gap there. Let's just move the carriage back and check it off the uh, gap. Well, it shouldn't make much difference. It has helped it a little bit. We're only half a bubble out. I didn't really want to pull the gap out of this machine, but it's possible we, we may have to. Yeah, we're a full bubble out there. Well, a full line out. Okay, so that's pretty close. So, checking it. On the uh, cross slide. Yeah, we're, we're pretty, pretty good there. So that's our initial, um, I'm not going to worry about running the cross light up and down with this level on it. Um, so that was our initial level. So it's looking like we do have to have a adjustment on the feet up the headstock end. While we're over this side of the lathe, uh, we have got our coolant in now. And that bracket that I was talking about the other day or the, last week, I've made this bracket up, fabricated it up. That's all out of 16 millimeter plate. Well, that's about 25 mil under there. Uh, this is a good solid bracket. Now I have a bush, a BSP bush welded in from underneath and that supports our coolant pipe. Of course, from there, the rest, that's just temporary at the moment. And from here down is um, permanent. And I have an auxiliary line as well. We've got our light mounted up as well. And that's a wide end, goes through this lot here. Um, it's actually just cable tied in with this lot. Uh, there will be a sheet metal cover going over this uh, later on 
to protect it, but I'm sort of holding off until we get our DRO scale in and under here. So yeah, that's where we're at with all of that. So this is my uh, new to me 12 inch precision level. So this is graduated uh, half a thou increments over 10 inches. So this was um, graciously donated to me by a good acquaintance over in America, Phil. And he's gone through it and re-scraped it. So it's probably the flattest thing in my workshop. So we just have to do a final calibration on it. So you can see we're, we're just a tad off here, one division that way. If I turn the level over, 180 degrees. Let the bubble settle. The light's not really... Whoops. Yeah, so we'll just do a calibration on it. So it's just a matter of undoing these four screws, pop the top cover off so we can get access to the adjustment screw. Um, the reason why I've got it on uh, one, two, three blocks is our distance across here is very close to the edge of the Yeah, it's, we're sitting, we're teetering right on the edge and I'd, I'd hate to knock it and drop the darn thing. <laughs> I'd never forgive myself. Because there's a lot of weight to this thing too. It's quite a heavy little bugger. So let me get this cover off so we can access the adjuster and get this thing into final calibration. So I'll get a thinner tip screwdriver. Looks like VIS is the maker of the uh, level and it's made in Poland. So some pretty good gear comes out of Poland. Okay, that's our adjuster screw there. I'll leave that be. So that red paint in there, that's the sort of paint that they put on um, alternators. So I'll just put a little uh, dab of acetone on it just to release it a little bit. Should do it. And I'll get a correctly fitting screwdriver. Probably that one I had before. So we need to come up half of what the reading is here. So if I screw this screw in, it'll raise the vial up and our bubble will head that way. So we need to come in approximately half of what it's reading at the moment. So we're screwing in. Won't need much. Like I hardly even moved that. Let's go a fraction more. We don't want to take it till it's reading level because we don't know if what we're sitting on is level. Okay, so we've just got half of a bubble sticking out that end. So I'll rotate the level around 180 degrees. 
Which I might have gone a fraction too far, I think. And let's go 180 degrees. We'll let the bubble settle. Yeah, we went a fraction too far. Just back that off of here. Takes a while for the bubble just to settle. So we're, we're less than half a, yeah, that's, now we've got to come up, it's like, it's so small. Okay, so our bubbles level with the marker on the adjuster side. Okay, I'll do the rest of this off camera because I'm fiddling with half a division. Okay, I think we actually had it. So, I'll get you a bit squarer. Okay, so we are reading one division high um, up this end here. So we'll rotate half a turn. Let our bubble settle. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> okay, and we're reading, we're only a line thickness. We're actually only, yeah, a line thickness off the same reading. So, 
that's as closely calibrated as we are going to get. To get that any more, you'd have to split that distance in half. But who's to say when the weather changes, that's not going to change too. And just let it Let's go back the other way. So I think we've got that bang on. All right, that's how you calibrate a level. We get our top screwed back on. Okay, I'll do this off camera. I'm just putting four screws in. Okay, let's get this thing leveled now. So we know our initial levels we, that we did with the little starrett. We're not actually that far out. So what I'm going to do, well, uh, to start, I'll just walk you through how I do it. So that one, that leveling screw there, and the corresponding one on the other side will be screwed down. That one and its corresponding one or adjacent one are backed off. That one backed off, same with its mate on the other side. That one has weight on it, same with the one on the other side, and that one's backed off. So we're sitting on four points. Two there and two at the very end. And then for my initial level... Then I, I get the machine, I work between both ways, I do them both at the same time, get it sort of that way and that way as well. So what we're going to do now, we, we've got our level above the centre column there and we are reading uh, one, one and a half divisions headstock high. So what I'm going to do is slacken off these two. And then probably those ones. We'll just do these two first. We'll check the level. And then we'll slacken off this one here and its mate on the other side. So those two metal ones had bugger all weight on them. Nothing's changed here. That's okay. Slacking off this one, slacking off the very corner one. So we've only got weight now on the two here. We still got weight on the four headstock ones. So That can be slackened off. Same with the one on the other side. So we're on four points. Two at the very back, two down the tail stock end. We've come in actually quite good for level. We've moved nearly a division. So ever so gingerly, these two here, I'm just going to crank down just a fraction.
and that fraction was a fraction to I. Okay, we're smack on it here. That's reading dead on. So just for curiosity, we'll just see uh, the reading on the other side. And we're probably half a bubble out. But not too interested. I'm just going to focus on one way, on this rear way. So it's possible we stop, there's a twist in the bed. And that's possibly why we have a different reading there. So I'm going to just concentrate on this rear way with all of our level readings in this plane. So we'll just get our level down the very end, just for a quick bow peep and see what's happening down here. So you can see the back is high. This end is high. So we'll go to the headstock end. So the headstock ends high here. So in actual fact, we have come down, level out, and then we're going back up. Like there's a big sag in it. So bear in mind we've got no weight on there or there. So I'm just going to sneak this middle one up on both sides. And see what if see if we can balance out the effect it has between our slope coming up this way and our slope coming up this way. So I'm just going to very gingerly nip them down and watch the uh, level. So I'm just doing that just till it makes contact. Same with this one. Nip it down very slightly. And I'll take a bit down on these two as well. Back these off, just a touch. Nip these, just a touch.
Shouldn't have done that. So we're level there, there, in the middle here. It's just showing a slight rise. So might be able to correct that with our forehead stop one. So there's no quick uh, way to do this, so I'll get it where I'm satisfied um, off camera and I'll just bring you back for any of the key points. Okay, after several trips between the front and the rear, what we've got is a banana. So we're three divisions high with the level on this end. The middle is quite level. And we bring the level down this end here. We're 1.5 divisions high at that end. So we're shaped like a banana. So this lathe sat for a lot of years um, when I had it in storage in an unleveled state. And God knows what it was like before I took possession of it. So what we're going to do is come up on this middle one. And it's going to throw this one here out so it's quite possible we get to a state where we're the adjusting screws are barely even touching there but we've got to get this bow out of it so if we come up on this one because this one here we're reading high so we're up like that after a period of time that will ease back and our high one here this will ease the whole lathe has to flex back but we do have to maintain good contact on our four under the headstock for vibration factors and things like that most of our works in this area anyway so and not much goes on down here so we can afford to have these ones a little bit not loose, touching the uh, base feet, but without any weight on them. And after a period of time, this will slowly relax back the other way. It'll take a long time, but it will do it. So let me just jack these centers up, and we'll just get a, um, another reading. Um, I find if you don't write them down, you end up chasing your tail a fair bit too, if, if you've got a machine that's got a bowed bed in it I mean a bowed bed's not not a big problem it will come back straight again so let me just nip up these centers so we're one and a half divisions high on headstock end Still pretty level here. Some 
come up a bit more in this middle. You're still uh, reading a uh, little here. You can come some more. Tie it back off. Then just try something. I'm just going to nip down the two very end ones, and that might help flex it the other way as well. Just a light nip on the very end. made it worse. And we're one division away there, half there. Still sitting level here. He's back. These front ones off just a touch. We're half a division off here. And still level here. I let us settle for a bit and we'll come back. Okay, so down the tailstock end we're half a division. Uh, low at this end the center it's probably half a division high towards the tailstock end and the headstock ends probably it's just well it's probably bang on if anything just a fraction of a division towards the headstock high So that's good enough for now. So now we will set the level on the cross slide and check it in the same positions in case we're getting any of this carry on. So before we put our level on our cross slide, we're going to make sure there's no is sticking up it's going to affect our readings and then we'll put it on the back there's less damage across here that's all pretty good now just using my precision flat stones um, I brought these uh, quite a few years ago now off um, Stephen Lang Shark River machine over in the US and then uh, every seems like every man and his dog makes them nowadays so. okay we can sit our level up here now doesn't Feels really good. It's not, doesn't appear to be uh, hitting on anything. We are two bubbles high 
on that side there. So we'll run the carriage up and down, have a look. Come up towards the chuck. Two bubbles high. One and a half bubbles high. So let's just wind down a little bit of this corner. That didn't take much at all. Come back the other way. That's actually changed the three bubbles the whole way. We'll come back to the centre. Oh no, it's back to two. So the lathe is actually high on my side uh, by two divisions. So we can back these bolts off and bring it down or we can jack up the rear ones and bring it up. All of equal amount because otherwise we're going to put it out of whack that way. Actually two divisions isn't too bad, at least it's not up and down, it stayed pretty constant. So to bring the lathe up the two divisions we're going to tighten up the bolts here. So what I've done, in case it all turns to shite and we make a pig's ass of it, I've got a texter and I've just marked the orientation of the bolts as it is. So yeah, in case we've got a, everything goes pear-shaped and we've got to reset back to where we were before. So to tighten them up all the same amount, I'm using the ring end of the spanner and my marker, put it there. I'm going one ring width on, on all the ones that are contacting. That'll give us an even lift. So we'll go and check our level. Okay, down the tailstock end, we've come up dead level. So we'll head towards the headstock. We'll stop in the centre. We're one division. So we've still got to come up at the back to bring the bubble across. So we're one division this way. All right, we'll go to the headstock. And we're the same one division. Okay, so we'll bring uh, this end of the machine, the rear of the machine up. So just the very slightest nip down on the headstock and the centre post, it's only going to be a fraction. Maybe went the wrong way. Lucky I'll mark those bolts. Nuts. Okay, it only needs a tiny fraction.
that's looking pretty good there. Let's wind it back to the center. Center's got to come across or up at the rear just a tad. So on the end where the tailstock is, we've come up quite good there. So we'll head down to the middle. So in the middle. That's not too bad. So we'll go up the headstock end. So that's our headstock end. We're within a line thickness. So that's all right for now. So now we'll just go back, run down and double check the long, uh, longitudinal level again, just to double check that. And hopefully nothing's moved. I mean, these screws, any more than finger, you know, once you start, you can't even nip them down. No, will affect that level. It's just, a, just till they're touching on the remaining screws. Otherwise it will throw the level out. Okay, so I've been around all the positions and the most wear out is half a bubble. It can vary, you know, like it does vary a little bit, but half, yeah, about half a line I can get it all within. So bear in mind this lathe sat for, for, well, I've had it probably, I don't know, five years. Sitting in an unlevel state in an old shed. So we're going to let it go as it is and we're going to let it settle in and then we'll, we'll come back and we'll keep rechecking it and once it settles down we should really be checking these every six months anyway so we'll just keep a close eye on it so what I'll do now is I'll make sure we've got all of our bolts the ones that aren't loose will only just get very lightly nipped down and I mean nipped as in just a bit more than finger tight yeah otherwise it, it does throw the level out so. so we just need to go through now and nip down these uh, lock nuts on them all Like over time things will settle in better and better and then there yeah, is where we just keep keep an eye on the level of it on it just holding a spanner on it to make sure we don't lo uh, move anything just a very light nips all they need I'll go around and do all of them Well, okay, I think we'll bring this one to a close. Um, I'm quite happy with the result, considering, yeah, the way this lathe sat for many a year. So, main thing is our, our, our the first half of the machine is pretty good. And uh, over time, the things will settle in as they do. So, um, it is a long, laborious process, and you can chase your tail for hours, you know. Um, some machines come up a bit easier than others, and uh, well, it is what it is. But yeah, no, I'm happy with the result that we've got. So, um, anyway, cheers, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see us in the next video. I think we've got some old, old parts to machine. <laughs> All right.